Greetings friends, coming to you with this video on our High Point Friends Facebook page this afternoon mainly because this morning we tried to have um, our live stream and had a few glitches with the connection that we'll be working on so didn't have that to upload on the Facebook page so I thought I would just make a short video and share a few things with you um, particularly around announcements and prayer concerns and even the message um, just something to get your week started and help you feel a part of uh, what's going on at High Point Friends Meeting. Uh, today we had a good crowd, good number of folks that gathered um, out of the cold and uh, gathered there at 10 a.m. at High Point Friends Meeting. And uh, we had a couple of celebrations, or one celebration as a matter of fact. We sang a, uh, uh, one hymn and we had one hymn played in honor of Theron Farlow's 92nd birthday. For some of you that may not know, Theron is the father of Carmen Farlow, our organist, and it's his 92nd, that is Theron's birthday, 92nd birthday this coming week. So we sang, I Heard an Old, Old Story, uh, which to some, you may know that as the song Victory in Jesus. Uh, we sang that, and Carmen played the song When We All Get to Heaven. Uh, these are two favorites of Theron's. So uh, we enjoyed uh, sharing in that time, enjoyed sharing that experience. So happy birthday, Theron, and thank you, Carmen, for um letting us celebrate with you and your family. Uh, we had a number of prayer concerns that were shared uh, from the congregation this morning. Two in particular that we want uh, folks to remember is, um, first of all, Claudia Blair's mother, Heidi Lenz. She is still in the hospital under observation. Uh, she's had some issues with her kidneys and Claudia has been there with her um, quite extensively. And again, her mother is at Moses Cone uh, for observation. So continue to pray for her. Claudia and her mother Heidi. Also ask that you pray for uh, um, Kathy Baker and her mother Shirley Atkins. Uh, Shirley had, uh, which would basically be emergency surgery a couple nights ago for a perforated bowel. She was in surgery for about two to three hours. Uh, she's at Novant in Kernersville and is recovering. But Heidi, thank, uh, excuse me, Kathy thanks you for uh, her prayers for her mother Shirley and for Kathy as well. And her sisters so if we could just keep these friends in prayer and there's others that you may um, know yourself uh, family friends we had a number of concerns for uh, co-workers neighbors uh, family members acquaintances certainly there seems like there's a lot of folks going through uh, very difficult times right now a lot of folks that are struggling so we were uh, honored and um, happy to hold these friends up in prayer as well as those up in prayer that gathered um, this morning so let's be praying for one another. Let's be encouraging one another. And if you know if there's someone um, through the week that you know is struggling, that you feel would uh, welcome an encouraging word, uh, a text, an email, um, drop them a line, uh, send them a card. Uh, let's reach out to one another during this time right now and let's help each other feel connected. I opened up our worship uh, by reading uh, something that I had actually posted on Facebook yesterday. Just something as a reminder that we're all going through a lot right now. Um, everyone's feeling a little bit strained and stressed. And a way for us to be mindful that what folks need most in life right now is grace and compassion. So here's uh, what I wrote, and this is what I shared with the folks this morning. Be mindful that what folks need most in life right now from congregations and individuals is grace, compassion, and understanding. Grace for their weariness, Grace for their trying to keep it all together. Grace for their moments of anxiety, sadness, and depression. Grace for their pandemic fatigue. Grace for their feeling disconnected from family and friends. And grace for their extra burden of having to care for others. Grace is the glue that mends our lives and our world. Let's be as graceful and gracious as possible. We're all struggling and we're all doing our best. So again, that's just a reminder that um, when you see people, when you meet people, when you come across folks, know that they're probably struggling. Know that everyone's going through a hard time right now, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and even mentally. And uh, we're doing our best just trying to make it through each day. And I think if we keep that in mind, if I keep that in mind, uh, maybe I can be a much more graceful presence to the person in front of me uh, rather than... Um, having high expectations or maybe even judgments at time. Now, the passage that was read this morning um, for our meeting for worship was out of Psalm 46. And this is out of the Common English Bible. 
Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a help always in times of great trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when its waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. There is a river whose streams gladden God's city. The holiest dwelling of the Most High, God is in that city. It will never crumble. God will help it when morning dawns. Nations war, kingdoms crumble. God utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Come, see the Lord's deeds. What devastation he has imposed on the earth, bringing wars to an end in every corner of the world, breaking the bow and shattering the spear, burning chariots with fire. That's enough. Now know that I am God. I am exalted among all the nations. I am exalted throughout the world. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. I mentioned in my message that there's a very familiar passage in, um, in Psalm 46. And that verse is, Be still and know that I am God. In the common English Bible that I read, it's, uh, actually reads, that's enough. Now know that I am God. But the more familiar uh, rendition is be still and know that I am God. And you're going to see that verse on a lot of um, postcards. You may see it on a lot of posters. I see it on a, on a lot of memes on social media. And it serves a good purpose. It's, it's a comfort. It brings encouragement. Uh, it brings a level of peace. I know a lot of folks that live by this verse to be still and know that I am God. But what's interesting is, taken out of that context, we may not realize just all that God has to say or the psalmist has to say around that verse. You know, you can read that verse and think to yourself, well, that's all fine and good, but does this person know what my life is actually like? And my life is in an uproar. My life feels like it's just falling apart. My life feels like it's crumbling. My life feels like that it's in total upheaval. Well, the context of that verse, quite honestly, is that very thing. Again, listen to Psalm 46. It begins with, God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. There's a nearness to God. There's a, a nearness to God's presence. There's a, a proximity that God is with us continually. God isn't far off. God isn't aloof. God isn't distracted. God is always near, particularly in times of great trouble. And then the writer goes on, that's why we won't be afraid. When the world falls apart, that's very stark language. When the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when its waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. In other words, you just get the image of total upheaval. You get the image of total chaos. You get the image of things that have just turned upside down. But it's within that context that the writer says, God is our refuge and strength, a help always in times of trouble, a near help in times of great trouble. It doesn't matter what we're experiencing. It doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter how disruptive our lives have been or what has disrupted our lives. God is always present. Joyce Rupp, who is a spiritual director and author, paraphrases those first three verses in this way. When things do not go as we wish, when love falls out of your heart, when disaster plummets our spirit, when failure squelches our hope, when betrayal destroys our trust, when death snatches our joy, when goodbye outweighs hello, when confusion alters our vision, when what we know no longer exists, you stand by us. That is, God, you stand by us as our strong support. In other words, God is our confidence and God is our strength. Again, to use that language, as the psalmist writes, we will not be afraid when the world falls apart, when mountains crumble, when our lives feel like they're falling apart, when our lives feel like they are crumbling, when marriages feel like they're falling apart and crumbling, when relationships feel like they're falling apart and crumbling, when our own confidence feels like it's falling apart and crumbling, when all of those things are happening. We hear those first two verses, but God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. And it's within that context, it's within that very context that we hear those words, be still 
and know that I am God. To be still and know that God is present. To be still and know that God is real and that God is near. To be still and know that God is literally at work 24-7, creating and recreating and transforming our world. God is 24-7 seeking to bring peace and wholeness and and um, and and healing to our world, our world that is wounded, our world that is in pain, that God is with us through all of this. In the middle of this psalmist, uh, psalm reads, God is in that city. It will never crumble. God will help when morning dawns. Nations war, kingdoms crumble. God utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of heavenly hosts and forces is with us. Regardless of what happens in the city, regardless of what happens in our community, regardless of what happens around us, God will help it when morning dawns. In other words, when the new day begins, it's a fresh experience of God. Each morning we awaken, we awaken into this reality of God's presence. So that is the context, literally the context of be still and know that I am God. I think we've often looked at those verses as being in the context of a life that's very serene, of a life that's very simple, of a life where everything is just kind of cruising along okay, when in reality, be still and know that I am God is in the context of a world that often feels chaotic, a world when it seems like things are falling apart, a world when it seems like things are crumbling right before us. That is the context of that verse. And the words be still literally mean to cause yourself to let go, to release, or to surrender, or in some translations, it is to cease striving. I love how the New Jerusalem Bible puts it. It reads this way, pause a while and know that I am God. And maybe that is the message that we need to hear, that I need to hear. Be still and know that I am God. It's good words. Cease striving and know that I am God. Those are good words. But maybe this rendition, pause a while and know that I am God. Maybe this week we can take a holy pause, if you will, at any point during our day when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel like things are falling apart, when we feel like things are unraveling, when we feel things that are crumbling beneath us. Uh, maybe we are in the season uh, right now of um, uncertainty. Maybe our life is in a season of change. Maybe our life is in a season of transition. Maybe our marriage is going through a certain season, maybe a tough season, maybe a fruitful season. But in all of those instances, when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel fear is driving us just to keep going faster and harder, when we feel our fear and anxiety um, are just driving us to just go faster and harder and we're not able to think clearly or get clarity or we just feel like we're just spinning out of control, we hear these words, pause a while and know that I am God. So let's make that uh, a possibility this week. At some point in our day, if we feel like we need to stop, we just pause. And in that pause, we invite God's Spirit to come and to help us recenter, to help us remember God's presence with us, to help us remember God's gifts and goodness to us, to help us remember how God has been with us in the past and how God will be with us in the present and the future. Maybe we can simply pause and take a deep breath and ask ourselves, how do I want to respond in this moment? So much when we have fear and anxiety that are driving us, we react rather than we respond. And when we react, we often don't make good choices. We often don't react in good ways. When we take that pause, we take a step back and ask, how can I choose to respond in a certain way, in a way that is life-giving, in a way that possibly is more mature? in a way that, that doesn't create more problems than I need to. Maybe we can take a pause and get clarity around a decision we need to make. Maybe we can take a pause and just take a deep breath and say it's okay to rest. It's okay to step away from what I'm doing, step away from a meeting that I'm in, step away from what I'm working. Maybe it's just a pause that's longer than just a moment, but maybe we hit the pause button on interacting with certain people or interacting in certain relationships because uh, they're just too much for us right now, or they're not serving our soul well. Whatever the case may be, we take a pause and simply allow God's Spirit to strengthen us, to encourage us, to bring courage into us, um, and to open up our hearts and, and our lives and, and welcome God's presence in all of its many forms and ways. 
pause a while and know that I am God. This is what the psalmist invites us to do. I want to read a paraphrase of Psalm 46 um, before I close out of um, a contemplative prayer, contemplative prayer book. And this is, uh, this is what Psalm 46 sounds like written in, in a contemplative verse. God, when all of life seems to be collapsing around us, you hold the center firm. When storms swirl in the outer world, you remind us of the inner realities that still are anxious hearts. There is, then, no reason to get worked up over disruptions in the world around us. Neither shaking earth, nor devastating winds, nor rising waters, nor unstable relationships will be able to move us from our true center in you, from living true to you. You walk with us. Your spirit gives us strength. Your heart is the home of our deepest joy. And dwelling within your love, we will never be shaken. When we awaken to an uncertain world, the very dawn reminds us that you never stop coming to us. You speak into our hearts. Quiet yourself. Be still. Listen. Experience me as God of all. And even when the world is in disarray, when nations war and persons are at odds with each other, your voice thunders and reminds us that you stand over it all. You walk with us. Your spirit gives us strength. And amen. So yeah, maybe this week we can learn, I can learn, to just pause and know that God is with me. To pause and know that God is with you. To pause and to simply take a deep breath and breathe in the life-giving spirit of God. Exhale all that is stressing us, all that is causing us to fear, all that is causing us to be anxious, and just simply breathe in God's life and gr God's life-giving grace and mercy. Our friends, I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a good start to your week. Um, if there's anything we can do to be praying for you, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us at High Point Friends Meeting. You can reach me at scottwagner62 at gmail.com. That's Scott Wagner, S-C-O-T-T-W-A-G-O-N-E-R 62 at gmail.com. You can reach us at 336-884-1359. That's our office, 884-1359. And if you'd like to join us for worship, we're, we meet for worship every Sunday um, at 800 Quaker Lane in High Point at 10 a.m. in the morning. So I uh, would love to see you I uh, would love to get to know you, and we'd love to have you journey with us at High Point Friends Beating. So friends, have a great day. Uh, have a blessed day, and I hope you have a great start to your week and a blessed week as well. We'll see you later.